Up with Crim begins now. Coming up now, 7 a.m. on our Tuesday morning. This morning on Up with Crem, shopping malls are starting to open up in the Inland Northwest, but shopping will not look the same. We'll look ahead to what you can expect. And with the highest national unemployment rate since the Great Depression, local universities have rolled out incentives to persuade students to continue their education. This morning, we'll introduce you to a program launched by Gonzaga University to help their alumni. And we are continuing to track breaking news this morning in Spokane Valley. Trent Avenue is back open this morning after a wreck in that area. Traffic was impacted from Lily Road to Park Road. And again, that wreck is now cleared. Well, good morning and welcome to Up With Crime. Great to have you with us this morning. I'm Jen York, joined by my colleagues Joshua Robinson, Evan Arani, and Dana Marie McNichol. Hi, guys. Good to be back today after a long holiday weekend. Dana Marie, how was your weekend? Oh, it was great. I actually played golf for the first time a couple of weeks ago. I broke my collarbone mountain biking, and I'm feeling good. And I'm glad I can hit the, hit the golf course. Oh, yeah, maybe that'll change your swing a little bit. <laughs> I was a little bit more cautious, that's for sure. Uh, balls went uh, not straight every single time, but I think I'm going to blame it on my collarbone. But I think golfers always have things to blame there. Bad golf game on. So just another one to add. <laughs> <actually>. Always. <laughs> you get a few extra mulligans, that's for yeah, sure. Exactly. Uh, all right, we're going to be checking in with the team here in just a few minutes. But first, we do want to get to some local headlines here on our Tuesday morning including this. Leaders with the Coeur d'Alene tribe say five people on the reservation tested positive for coronavirus. The tribe reported its first confirmed case on Friday. Now they say the child has mild symptoms and is isolating at home with her family. Due to contact tracing from the Panhandle Health District, they link the illness to an additional four family members. They say the other patients are a man and a woman in their 20s, a man in his 30s, and a woman in her 40s. Experts told them to self-quarantine at their home. The University of Washington Medicine is furloughing 4,000 union employees. This is on top of the 1,500 other furloughs announced last week for professional and non-union staff. Now, this is amid a $500 million shortfall. Experts say it stems from canceled elective surgeries and non-urgent medical procedures. The medical center says UW Medicine executive leaders are also participating in the furloughs. Most of the Washington coast opens today for fishing. State Fish and Wildlife says marine fishing in a few areas on the west side will open for bottom fish, shellfish, mussels, clams, and oysters. And today, crabbing near the mouth of the Columbia River is also set to resume under normal regulations. Though people are still required to follow state guidelines by fishing in their local communities, traveling only with family or household members, and practicing physical distancing by keeping at least six feet apart from other groups. And that's a quick look at your headlines here on our Tuesday morning. Another headline here locally is, boy, we are warming up this week after a bit of a drizzly Memorial Day. We want to bring in Evan Arani now for a look at what we can expect this morning. Hi, Evan. Hi, Jen. Yeah, good morning to you. An overcast start to the morning for most of us, though those temperatures are going to keep warming up today, and we're going to see those clouds part at times, leading to partly cloudy conditions. Uh, boy, the warm-up that we have later on this week is very significant. We've got the possibility of upwards of 20 degrees above normal for your uh, afternoon high temperatures. But as we start off your morning right now, we're mainly in the 50s. You see on satellite radar how most of those showers have cleared farther off to the east of us, though some will pop up into the afternoon too so it won't be entirely dry for the north idaho panhandle and for western montana but for central washington and eastern washington don't expect all that much in terms of precipitation there will be a little bit of a breeze coming through 10 to 15 mile per hour winds southwesterly winds uh, 72 degrees is that forecast high by this afternoon that'll keep us uh, just a few degrees above normal for this time of year and then the significant warm-up comes later on so tomorrow we get to the mid to upper 70s by thursday we're in the 80s 
80s. And then Friday and Saturday, upper 80s expected. It's going to be a nice little taste of summer weather, and it's only very brief because we've got a cool down that'll come uh, later on in the weekend, Sunday and Monday, where we're back down to the low 70s. So it's not going to last for all that long. And keep in mind, this is way too early for us to see a prolonged stretch of 80s, but we will get it for a few days, and it'll be a nice little taste of uh, what we're hoping for later on this year. But for now, Joshua, I'll send things over to you in just a bit. We'll take a look at that seven day forecast. Looking forward to seeing what the week is going to look like and how it plays out. Evan, we'll see you then in just a few minutes. Coming up here on 705 this morning, Spokane Valley and Northtown malls are reopening today and Northtown will be open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now, according to the Northtown website, only a few stores will reopen today, including the salon and several jewelry stores. Some stores are also providing curbside services today, including stores like Kohl's, Macy's and Barnes and Noble. The food court will also be open with adjusted seating, but restaurants are still being encouraged to continue carry out as well. Now, like we mentioned, Spokane Valley Mall also opening today, but downtown River Park Square Mall opened up over the extended weekend. That's where we find our Nicole Hernandez live there this morning to explain some of the ways that she sees the mall has changed. Nicole, good morning. Yeah, that's right. Hello. So since early April, River Park Square's doors have been locked. And let me tell you, I was walking around a little bit earlier, and it's actually kind of eerie to think that how quiet and empty the mall is now this morning is how it's been for almost two full months, if not more than two months now. So it's definitely a little bit different, but as of Sunday, people have been allowed back in here, but there are some changes that have happened though. So check out these signs. There's these social distancing signs scattered around the entire mall. There's also signs on the doors saying which ways enter, which ways exit, some signs on the floors as well to make sure people are safe while they're shopping. Also, as of this morning, not every store in the mall is actually going to be open. The mall is slowly going to be getting back to normal, but it's not going to be completely normal anytime soon. So I spoke with uh, Rita from River Park Square Mall, and here's what she had to say about how they're working with their stores. All right, looks like we don't have her there, but she was t telling me that basically all of these stores and the malls have been working together to be able to know that they're all following the rules correctly and that they're constantly communicating, making sure that they know who's opening when and that everyone's following the guidelines that the state has set. So here's a list of all of the River Park Square stores open as of today. Rocky Mountain Chocolate, Whiz Kids, Oil and Vinegar, Ben and Jerry's, Free People, Anderson and Company is opening up today, Urban Outfitters, Cosmic Cowboy, Leland's Barbershop, and Anthropology. But again, that list is changing quickly as stores decide to open back up. Some stores are not planning on opening back up as of yet, but you can get a full list of what stores are open and which ones aren't online. In Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Thank you very much, Nicole. Appreciate that update this morning. 708 now on your Tuesday. We're checking in with our own Dana Marie McNichol this morning for a local story coming out of Gonzaga today. That's right, Joshua. Now with the highest national unemployment rate since the Great Depression at 14.7% looming over recent graduates looking for a job hasn't really been easy, but universities have rolled out incentives in order to persuade students to continue their education, including Gonzaga University. They announced the Alumni Graduate Education Scholarship, a program that offers alumni 15% tuition reductions on Gonzaga's graduate, master's, and doctorate programs, excluding law or medicine. Now, they do say the program aims to help Gonzaga alumni improve their professional development and career opportunities during this difficult time. For one recent graduate with a degree in biology, entering the job market right now is not easy. Instead of walking out of college hall or like, you know, closing the classroom door, you're, you're like closing your computer in your own desk, which is so, I just never thought that would be how I ended college. A lot of companies right now, it's such a hard time to accept new, you know, job applicants. So it's been tough, you know, a little tough momentum at the moment, but I think things are going to start getting better. I've signed out a bunch of applications. Like some of them just like send a resume, send a cover letter, attach your LinkedIn and then hope for the best. And it's like. I just got to get through that first process and then on to the next. He's been using resources from the Career and Professional Development Office at Gonzaga University to guide his search. We just ask for 
help students understand how to be resilient and how to use that time in creative ways to network, to get to know what employers are hiring, um, and to look for positions that they qualify for. Um, there are some resources even now that are posting jobs that are remote work from home positions. Gonzaga University has called every graduating student to see and check in on how their job search is going. They did hear from students that their employees are still honoring the offers they have made to them. But for those who are still looking, the future is full of un unknowns. What if I don't have anything by here? So, um, no, it's, it's always in the back of my head. So that just makes me just, you know, work at it more and more. Um, that's only knows what to do, but a lot of stuff is out of my control. Although there might be a lower amount of positions open, the Career and Professional Development Center recommends strengthening their network. So I think one of the strengths of Gonzaga is that we have a very supportive alumni base. And we actually did um, some online workshops this week with our alums. And they are committed to helping our students succeed because their success really reflects on them as well. And I could speak to that alumni connection as a Gonzaga graduate myself, but I know not only recent graduates, but people all over the world are dealing with this. So um, sending them some good thoughts and good luck on that job search process. Grateful to be working for Crem here um, with a great team. Thank you very much, Dana Marie, for, for, you know, as being part of that team. <laughs> Appreciate the compliment. But, of course, we also thank you for bringing us that story this morning coming out of Gonzaga here. All right, it's 7-11 now. <clears throat> Excuse me. A new viral claim states that one minute of talking releases as many as a 1,000 droplets into the air. And that raises questions about the spread of COVID-19. We're checking the facts after the break. But before that break... Check this out. Look at that little face <laughs> out of the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta, who's announced the birth of their newest beluga whale. At birth, the newborn weighed in at 174 pounds and measured five feet four inches long. Sing your little song, sing for all your friends. We like.